The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. I've posted the chart for the DAX and also for the FTSE to take a look at. You can see that we've been in extended uh, trading range here for quite some time. A little different than what we have here in the U.S. where stocks go up just about every day. Uh, we're going to do something a little differently today, folks. Uh, I had to do a, well, I didn't had to, but I, I was enjoy doing it. A, I was interviewed by a uh, uh, one of the uh, firms out of London yesterday, and the thing that they wanted to talk about was the fact that uh, the old floor trading days, and I, uh, I didn't think they would be interested in it, but by golly, they they certainly uh, they certainly had a strong interest. Now, what I've posted into the den today is the trading cards that we used on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Now, let me explain to you why I went to Chicago because I think it's relatively important. I know it looks very faint because that it's old and faded. It's 40 years old, uh, so I'm sorry about that. But it shows you that uh, my badge was Pez, and B19 was my uh, was my my member, well, my member number was 618, but my B19, uh, I forget what that number was for. I don't remember what it was, but anyway, that's uh, that's really what it was. Okay, let me explain to you why I went to Chicago. When I was at Drexel the last years there of 81, 82, I was working very closely with John Hill on the opening price and a whole bunch of other stuff, and I would go back to uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina, and work with John for four or five days at a time. And we were beginning to see that uh, there were, we were going to see you know, these desktop computers become very, very popular. Uh, CompuTrack down in New Orleans was working on one with Walt Bressert and a couple of, I think Jake Bernstein was involved. And uh, that took off and became very, very popular. That's how I first met Mark Douglas uh, in 83. And uh, we could see that these these machines were going to be coming and we were going to be doing something different than calling in our orders. And uh, so we'd be able to, you know, to trade at home. Well, John always was a little skeptical because he thought the floor traders, you know, flashed the stops. And so uh, when I got ready to take my seat at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange in January of 82, one of the things that we decided to do was to check out to make sure that your orders were really well protected when you put your orders in uh, in Chicago. And, and this, even though this is 40 years ago, folks, it's still relatively important now because even though things are a little more complicated, they're still pretty much the same. But you folks have a tremendous advantage now. You basically have a seat on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or when any exchange you're ever trading, if you're trading electronically, because let me explain to you what it was like. Those trading cards, you had to have a stack of those uh, every day when you went down to the floor to trade. And uh, I traded basically uh, the, the first week I traded in the pit. After that, I didn't trade uh, anymore. The reason why is on the first day I got hit with a $3,000 out trade. In other words, a guy said he did a trade with me that he didn't do, which I knew what was happening, but I didn't know how to prevent it. We had to go to arbitration, and uh, we had to split the difference, which was quite a bit. And then finally, on the last day of the week, in my first week, I got tagged for $6,000. But this one was a little different because the guy, it was his third offense. And uh, basically, they asked him to leave the exchange, and he had to pay the, pay the difference uh, because it was a good trade. Those were called out trades, and you had to have an out trade clerk to match up the buys and sells. That's what those cards were for. Every 10 minutes, the clerks would come by and pick up the cards, and they would turn them into the exchange, and they would match up the buyers and sellers. And if you think that's not hard to do, you're in the midst of a battle, and you're scribbling down. I mean, I don't know how they ever did it. There was a broker there 
uh, Ricky Lawrence, uh, he, uh, Harry Harry Lawrence's brother, younger brother. He was the greatest, the greatest floor trader, uh, floor filler of all time. He could he did everything by memory. He had a photographic memory. He could remember the exact time, the exact price of every order he did all day long, and he did hundreds of them. He was a filler in the T bill pit, and uh, that was the biggest pit at the time because interest rates were 12, 13, 14 percent. So what? After I got down to Chicago, I uh, I, I got my seat from Jack Waldock. I got one of his seats, and then I worked. Uh, I, I put all my um, business through Lind Waldock, Barry Lind, because I had done all my meat business with Barry Lind uh, when I was in uh, uh, Beverly Hills, and I had a uh, you know really good relationship with him, and they gave me my own clerk, and her name was Jan Sklar, and she was the daughter of one of the floor traders in the hog pit. Jerry Sklar, and so I everything I did with, with, was with through that, and so I was able to to do the order. So basically, when you went into the pit in the morning, now I'm new, you know. See, so I'm I'm the I'm the low guy on the totem pole, so I've got to be really careful. I don't know anybody back there other than a few guys that I met over the years when I went back with Drexel, maybe three or four people, and those guys were in the desks upstairs. My first day there, I'm looking down from the T-bill pit. I'm standing way in the back, out of everybody's way, and I see this guy come in. And he's wearing these old rubber galoshes, and he's got this uh, cashmere overcoat on and this uh, fedora hat, and he's really, really got some expensive clothes on. And I see him go over to the Goldman Sachs desk, and uh, I'm, I'm smiling and laughing. I said, look at that. He's got this $1,000 uh, outfit on, and he's wearing galoshes. And uh, his, sec his, uh, his clerk, Marianne Gordon, pointed it out that I was smiling or laughing, and uh, he— uh, you know, had his he, he she took his galoshes up to the to the uh, lockers and stuff, and he walked over to me, and he said, "Why are you smiling and laughing?" And I said, "I said, I really, it's funny. I said you're wearing galoshes, and I said you have all this, you know, beautiful uh, clothes on." I said, "I thought it was rather rather comical. I certainly didn't mean anything, and I apologize." He says, "No," and it was Byron Tucker. And um, he said, I'll talk to you during the break, you know, because he did take a break. And he ran he ran two desks. He ran the desk for Delsher, which was Leo Malamud, and he also ran the desk for Goldman Sachs. He had a whole bunch of employees doing it. He basically was doing the Delsher desk to help out um, Leo Malamud. So what happened was when the pit started, the brokers would come in early in the morning, and they would hire a clerk to stand in the pit at their spot that they wanted to trade because it was first come, serve, first serve. So you had to be someone in there standing. And the T-bill pit had probably 300 people in it. And so there had to be the, the key ones were the ones that were closest to the to the top step, which was the lead uh, the lead contract, like right now, it would be March, and that's where the order fillers were. Rick uh, Rick March was one of the biggest order fillers in the T-bill pit, and uh, he had probably five girls, and he would be facing into the pit looking at the orders, and the girls would be behind him with the orders. They held the decks, and they would hand the orders to him, and he would fill them, and it was so – it was organized chaos, folks. I couldn't understand what was going on the first few, first few days, but then after, you know, uh, someone explained to me what was happening, it was really quite easy, but the orders would come in and there would be people on the phone you know back about 20 or 30 feet they were also hand signaling to the girls if a big order came in and uh, you you got to understand what the hand signals were you know if the guy put uh, four fingers on his top and waved it it was for 400 and if he waved it sideways it could be uh, you know uh, 800 but if it was a really big order in thousands then that that phone clerk would walk over and talk to the broker and talk to Rick March and whisper in his ear that uh, that was something big was happening when that happened you had to be really really careful because you didn't want to be on the wrong side of that big order so that's how that worked i hope you're interesting to this because this is how it worked but you know it's a lot different now we'll be right back 877-927-6648 If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, uh, during the break, Ruby asked to take a look at the platinum chart. As you can see here, folks, uh, we are very close to completing that ABCD pattern that uh, completes around 1036. We broke out above that uh, double top easily, and uh, the, the, the pattern comes in at uh, roughly, uh, I think if you can look there, it's around 1036, uh, 1038. So uh, it did break out to the upside. Gold and silver still lagging a little bit, but it still looks okay. All right, I want to continue you on about the uh, how the order flows and stuff like that and I want to tell you a few stories that I learned my main reason for going there to the exchange was to see that these stops were really protected I found that out during the very first week I saw that these decks you know were very tightly held and they were they were called million dollar decks they were, they were called million dollar brokers because they made a million dollars a year filling paper they got paid two dollars for every contract that they filled. So if it was a 400 lot order, he made $800 on that contract. That was $2 in, $2 out. We were, I was a $2 broker because I handed my orders into the pit. I actually did not go into the pit after the first week because of those out trades. All I had to do was just hand my broker directly to Rick March. He could fill it and I could get it right back. I had a total cost in of $2, total cost out $2 and no out trade problems. And that was the main thing that I was worried about was these out trades because those were the ones that could have some thieves down there and you had to be really, really careful. Back in 1996, 1997, I think his, his name was Harry Houtkin, uh, became one of the SOS bandits. And those are the ones that forced the NASDAQ to go to a decimal system. Instead of being quarter half, quarter half, quarter half on the stocks, they went to a decimal system. And that made the price of the executions drop oh, you know, exponentially. Instead of paying a quarter 
to get in, you in 20, which was uh, you know 25 cents. They were trading for three and four cents, and that continued on until they forced the stock exchange to do it, and uh, the New York Stock Exchange, and that changed all the trading. And then of course the internet came in, and we got the phones coming in and all this stuff. But the the orders were were still protected. You don't have that problem now because the everybody is pretty much has their own seat on the exchange. Uh, all you have to do is you know just to monitor you know where the bids and offers are and what the spreads are. That's the main thing. The reason why I went to uh, Chicago, as I mentioned, was that was the main reason to see if that was fair. It was about the third week. Uh, I think it was in January I was there, and uh, Jan Sklar was my clerk, as I mentioned before, and there was a pork belly report, excuse me, a cattle on feed report that came out. It was the, um, the yearly supply uh, supply thing. It comes out every January for cattle, and it was so bullish that they said cattle would be up the limit three or four days in a row. And I had short, I had shorted two contracts of pork bellies, and uh, you know I was really thought I was going to get killed. So I went over to Jan, and uh, she knew the girl that held the deck for Mar uh, Marty Zeidman, who ran the, uh, who was a lead filler for uh, February bellies. And so I asked Jan, I said, see if you can get this on top of the deck, so maybe I can get out with one limit. So she walked over and was talking to her, the, the clerk, and then the clerk talk, was talked to Marty, and then uh, she, he talked to Jan, and she walked over to me. She said, he wants to talk to you. And when she said that, I knew I was in big trouble because I was, I was jumping over some, uh, some strong rules there. So I, I just said, okay, I, this, I'm, they're probably going to throw me off. That's it. What, what can I do? So I walked over, and I apologized immediately, and I said, I'm sorry for doing this. I've only been down here a week, and I don't understand everything that's going on. He said, so pork bellies are going to be uh, up the limit? And I said, well, cattle are going to be up the limit three or four days. I figure pork bellies are going to be up. Are pork bellies going to be up the limit, kid? And I said, uh, well, I, I don't know. And so he had his deck, and he opened his deck. And the very first order was to sell 2,000 February, uh, February pork bellies at the market. This is when bellies traded big numbers. And he closed the thing up, and he said, just go back over to those uh, financial markets and trade with those animals and leave us over here to take care of our own business. Business. And uh, cattle opened up about 10 cents and were immediately limit down, and bellies didn't trade for two days. They went limit down two days in a row. So that was the only time I ever saw a deck in the two and a half years I was there on the floor. That was uh, the main thing that uh, I thought you'd like to, to remember. Uh, one of the best stories that I have that I remember very vividly was back in uh, August, late, I think it was August 31st of uh, 1983. I like to trade gold because gold had calmed down and it was trading like a five or six dollar range every day and it was really quiet in there compared to the T bill pit and I would go into the gold pit because I knew I knew all the gold people in there they were all pretty straight shooters so I could fill my own paper and I do a couple contracts here and there I'm in there and it was a little not very busy but uh, this one broker Rick, Richie Singer kept uh, getting right in my face I was trying to sell uh, buy a two lot and he was trying to sell me a ten lot I only wanted to buy a two lot. He was trying to sell me a tent. It was just really obnoxious. And finally, I just I gave in. And I just took the two lot. I saw the 10 lot. I said, take them. And so I, I got it. I walked out of the pit. I was really angry with myself. So I walked back to the uh, Lynn Waldock desk. I'm, and it was way on the other side because the gold pit was over in the financial. Lynn Waldock was over in the meats. It was probably 150 to 200 feet. I was skinny at that time, so I could make it quickly. So I went over there and I was going to have the runner just fill the order and get me out of it so I didn't have to worry. So I was walking over there. I got to the got to the direct, to the uh, lid wall dock thing. I gave the order to Reggie and I said, Reggie, I said, take this in and just get me out at the market. I said, I made a mistake. And so he said, okay. So he starts walking and he hasn't walked 10 feet from the lid wall dock. Uh, desk and the, the exchange exploded. I mean, it just went crazy. Uh, I mean, it was uh, it was really. Uh, we had an S and P pit, but there was nobody in it because they weren't even trading the S and P. It was like 102, 103, something like that. But everything went nuts. What happened was a a, a Russian airliner, uh, a Russian rocket, uh, one of these fighters had shot down Korean Airlines. 007 was the flight number, and gold spiked. And uh, I got out of that gold. Uh, oh my gosh! I, uh, I I I had no I had no control because by the time Reggie got there, 
you know, it was so crowded, you just couldn't do anything. By the time Reggie got there, I got out about $14 higher, and uh, then then I got in it, which was uh, which was really really great. And uh, what happened was, I uh, at the end of the day, I went over to uh, the the little Catholic church on the way home from the work I lived at McClure Court over on the on the lake, and uh, I would I would walk over to uh, Lake Michigan, and uh, it was only about a mile and a half, and uh, I would stop at this little church and I. Uh, a candle and stuff for the people that had died. I'm coming out of the church, and there's this couple there speaking to the priest, and they're both crying, you know, just really, really, just everything, you know. I, and I asked the, the the priest, I said, "What's going on?" I said, "Well, these pe people are having some trouble." He said, "They had someone stolen their stuff, and uh, they didn't have any money to get home, and so I was able to uh, able to get them home in comfort. So I was did a little something in good deed that day. But uh, when I went back in the pit." Uh, later on, uh, when things calmed down, I walked in and, you know, the gold was still up about 12 bucks. And I waved over to Ricky and gave him the thumbs up. And I said, thank you, buddy. You know, and I, I did it sincerely, you know. <laughs> anyway, that I've got a whole bunch of other stories. I'm not going to bore you with them. But remember, these things are really the same. Uh, the, the orders, you still have to know what the heck you're doing if you're going to put an order in. So I, that's it. All right, we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's open and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, 
Uh, okay, we're back, folks. And uh, one of the folks here at TFN had put a question in: Did the cards ever get mixed up? The buy sell. The the, the sell was in red. The uh, buy was in blue. Yes, but they did. They sometimes had it turned the wrong way. That's what the out trade clerk's job was to sort that all out. Uh, Byron used an out trade clerk, Rich Scanlon. He was the number one guy down there. He he was indisputable. He knew where everything was, and uh, it was uh, much easier when you had somebody like that on your team to be able to do that than if you were than if you didn't. So that's just neither here nor there. Sometime down in the future, I'll probably uh, you know bring some more stories. Uh, you know that there was a lot of them. I mean, alert. Well, just let me just there's a couple of them that are pretty interesting. Uh, standing in the backside of the T-bill pit, I uh, was befriended by uh, the, one of the best traders down there, Herschel Herendorf. He was uh, he was really an amazing man. He he died just a few years ago, but uh, he made millions of dollars uh, in the T-bills and other things too. But he got tired of trading, uh, and uh, he quit trading in '86 or '87, I believe, and. Uh, went in and bought a bunch of other business. He bought a uh, jet service and a whole bunch of other stuff. But uh, he was a very, very private fellow, and uh, and he was respected by everyone. And for some reason, I know what the reason was, we were chatting back there one day, and I asked him a little bit about his family. He was from Israel, and he had a mother who was sick. And she was in. Uh, she had to take uh, pork insulin. And of course, I worked for Eli Lilly, and he was saying they were having a hard time getting it because sometimes it was difficult because it was different than the beef insulin. So I made a call to the medical department to Dr. Griffith, who I worked with for about seven years, and I asked him if he could set up something for me. And he was able to contact uh, her physician, and she got a lifetime supply of uh, that stuff, which was really good. And from then on. Uh, Herschel uh, became my friend, and I, I, he and his brother, I uh, got to know them relatively well. And uh, so he was a big help. If I ever had any trouble, if I didn't, didn't have to go to Byron, I could go to Herschel, and that made uh, things uh, a whole lot easier for me. So that's uh, some of the things that I did. Uh, one of my most, another memorable experience was uh, uh, there's several families that were, were down there, folks, that they were third-generation traders down there. And... Uh, for right now, I just can't think of the name, but I'll think of it in just a second. But there was a little, uh, the young fellow had just graduated from the University of Chicago, and he was down there trading with his brothers. I'm trying to think of the name. I'll remember it in just a minute. And he was in the T-bill pit, and his dad said to him, uh, he said, uh, he said, you got a mistake here. He said, go in and go in and correct that mistake. And so he went into the pit and he came back out and he showed his dad the card. He said, you doubled up. He said, what, what's the matter with you? He said, you did the exact opposite of what I told you to do. You've increased your risk and everything. He said, but dad, I, I know it's going to change. I know it's going to change. And he reached around and grabbed the kid's badge and ripped his badge right off of his jacket off of his trading jacket and told him to get off the floor until he learned to what was uh, what was going on. Oh, he did one other thing that was really, uh, really amazing, and that was he uh, reached into the kid's pocket and grabbed his money, his money clip, and he threw the money out into the pit, which is a, that's an automatic fine of a couple hundred bucks. And uh, he was trying to tell him, if you're going to throw your money away, throw your own money away. You're not going to throw my money away. And so uh, the kid walked out, and he was all shook up. And Herschel said to the guy, uh, gosh, I can't remember his name. I can see his face. And he said, God, you're kind of hard on a kid, aren't you? And he said, Herschel, he said, if I don't tell him how to do it the right way, he's never, ever going to do it the right way. So he's got to learn the hard way way. And that was a hard lesson that uh, if you're going to do the right thing, do it right. Because if you add it to the losing position, which what he was what he did, that was a number one rule in that family that you didn't want to uh, didn't want to mess with it. So anyway, let's get back to the markets here. Uh, we got up to 13. What, what, 1026 in the uh, platinum backed off just a tiny bit. Not too much is uh, going on there. Uh, we've got a couple of markets that, that are very interesting, folks. Take a look here uh, at the, uh, and we got the trade thing going with the Chinese today, which will be interesting. But take a look here uh, at the March wheat. You'll notice we had a double bottom down here between May and September. Now we have a potential of a double top up in here. That double top comes in at uh, 574. The high last night was 574 and a half. Uh, it's trading around 572 right now. So if it backs off from here, this could be a double top formation. You can see the three drive to a top pattern 
over the past two weeks that I that I drove in right at the 1.618 expansion. So anything above 577 or 578 will tell you that this market is breaking out to the upside. So that's uh, that's the main thing that you want to uh, to keep in mind as you're as you're watching these things, uh, you know, move through the uh, uh, the day. Okay, let's take a quick look and see how we had a little. We're always having our little rally. We got the stocks uh, immediately rallied 10 points right after they opened up. Uh, we've got the Nasdaq it rallied quickly 30 points like it usually does because it looks like the stocks are going to go up absolutely forever. And uh, this astrology thing, this is the last day for it, folks. If we make new highs today, then that uh, aspect that I've been watching will have uh, not worked this time. And that means that, uh, well, it does mean a lot, but it does mean that it's not working this time. And, uh, and that's pretty important because those other times it certainly – uh, had some really serious things going on with it, but that's neither neither here nor there. Uh, I see price objectives now uh, for Tesla. And if you recall, we posted that chart for Tesla. It did hit the 1.618 expansion yesterday at uh, 450, I think 52 or something like that is what it did. And there's now Apple, uh, the price objectives on Apple are six hundred and a thousand dollars. I heard on uh, a, a, a Bloomberg yesterday, and Apple will be the first two trillion dollar uh, company s sometime in early 2020 or 2021. So that's good news for all those that are holding Apple. So uh, we'll move on here to the next one. Here is the uh, one of these things that we did get uh, from uh, that are being posted out on the internet. The fact that the stocks will never go down, that it's uh, breaking out of uptrend channels and things like that. And it certainly could because we have been doing that. But let's uh, keep in mind that Whenever things go up, they have a tendency to sometimes back off and go down, but that's not this time, but we'll see what happened. Let's take a quick look at the Bitcoin. We've had a nice buy in that bit. Well, not a buy. I didn't buy it down there. Tom Hugar did, but I didn't. Down there at that 6,400 level, which was the 61% retracement uh, on the long-term daily chart, and it was also on a log chart. It was a 382 retracement coming off of $100 a share. So uh, we've... Uh, popped up here the last couple of days. We've jumped another 660 points uh, to get up to the 61% retracement off of the uh, October high, which is uh, going to give us a little bit of a back off. But right now, this uh, cryptocurrency is going to uh, be moving. I would, uh, well, we got it. This is the first break already. Shut the front door and raise the rent. When we get back, I want to talk to you about quantum computing. I think this is something that we all have to pay attention to because it's going to be a big thing in the future. It's, uh, In fact, it's already in the future because China has already got a quantum computing thing going, and we're trying to catch up with them. We'll chat with that about just a little bit. I imagine David, David White probably knows more about this. He's forgot more about this than I know, and we probably should revert. But I'll give you my two cents worth anyway, and uh, we'll see how things are moving here. So that's we're watching 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, uh, I wanted to point out to you a really interesting chart here uh, in the soybean market. This happens to be the chart for March soybeans. Remember now we have this uh, Chinese thing is going to be signed right now. I believe they're signing the uh, deal right now at 930 uh, in the morning. Uh, no, it's 1130, 1130 New York time. But look at, look at soybeans here, folks. You notice how it went sideways here uh, for the last eight or nine days? Look what happened back in October when it did that. You see how it went sideways for eight or nine days and then it broke to the downside? Watch which direction this thing breaks from because this means there's a great deal of, uh, there's been a great deal of accumulation and distribution in these 10 days. That's what that means when you're looking at this. So whichever direction it comes out of, that's the direction it's going to go, much like we did in late October. Uh, so pay very close attention to that. If you go over to the far left of the chart and look in June, we did almost the same thing in June. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people taking positions on both sides. So the winner will be which way it comes out of here, and that's really what you want to be uh, keeping an eye on. So we'll watch it uh, as closely as we can. So we believe yes, you're right, Bill. Uh, Tom O'Brien was one of those so bandits, as I recall, and. Uh, it was an interesting time, that's for sure. That led to the dot-com bubble in uh, 2000, in, in, in 2000, which uh, the, the NASDAQ gave back 85%. Uh, and then in 2008, it gave back, I think, 80 or 90%. Of course, this time, it won't give back one-tenth of 1% because it's so very, very bullish. But we'll see what happens over this uh, time period. Uh, just the next, uh, someone asked what the next big uh, configuration is uh, for cycle stuff. And and that comes in. I'll post this up to you. You'll be able to see it. This is uh, the uh, spring equinox on March 20th. It come, uh, March 21st is a spring equinox. This is the, for the 20th. Uh, we have, uh, you can see that uh, there's a lot of cycles that are going to be lining up around that time, too. But uh, if this one doesn't work, it probably won't mean very much, but we'll pay, you know, very close attention to it. Let's remember the euro, folks, because we've been messing around here up in this uh, 111, 112 and change here. And that's a very, very important number. We've been talking about that for uh, several days here. 
because of the fact that, you know, we've completed that big A, B, C, D here, and that certainly means something. And uh, we've had a little bit of a rally, and uh, whether it's going to be enough to turn it, because the uh, all all of these currencies, folks, have had had major completions in these things, and it's going to be interesting to see if uh, that's going to be the case. And one of the ones that we're watching very very closely, of course, is related to the FTSE and um, the Megan exit. Now we got Megxit along with Brexit, and hold on here. Let's get up here. Hats on. We got the 29,000 in the Dow again. One more time. Next stop, 100,000. I saw that as one of the targets. Uh, I don't know if that came from a tweet from somebody, but I did see that on Bloomberg. But I did see a price target of uh, uh, $900 in uh, Apple, making it the first $2 trillion uh, country uh, company. All it has to do to get to $2 trillion is to get to $600 a share. And with the earnings coming up in about a week, they'll probably uh, tag on about $80 to it uh, during that time. So we'll be, we'll be watching it, uh, you know, very, very closely. So just see what happens as we move through here looking at uh, some of these other charts that we're watching. All right, uh, one other question. Some, oh, someone asked a question about the, uh, uh, about the seats back in, uh, back in 1982. Uh, the seats uh, for the, I had an IMM seat, which was a mini seat. The CME seats cost uh, a quarter of a million dollars. The IMM, which were all the financials, that was all the currencies and the T-bills and Jenny Mays and gold and all that stuff. That seat was $109,000, and uh, I got mine from Jack Waldock. Uh, if I had just kept that seat, uh, it would be worth a little over $4.5 million today, not counting the dividends that you would have got, which were a lot. Okay. Um, Let's move on to one other one that I wanted to mention to you, and that is this, uh, the, uh, someone asked a question yesterday, and I wanted to try to answer it here today. This is the British pound. This is an hourly chart. Folks, I, I don't mark the 61% retracements here except for the one that came in yesterday. You'll notice that these black lines that you see here, folks, those are the harmonic numbers in the British pound. You know, right now it's, it's running at just at about uh, around 80, 80 points. So it rallies 80 points and drops, rallies 80 points and drops. I'll let your imagination point out the ABCD patterns, as you see, but that's mainly what we're watching. But today is the first day that it's different. Today's the first day that that number of 129.90 has actually held. So that could mean that this thing could be ready to uh, you know, turn the other way. So we'll be able to see. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Marshall. You're a little late with that information, but I still certainly do appreciate it. Okay, I have another question here that we want to talk about, and that is the U.S. dollar index. Someone's asked about that. We've talked about that before, and you'll notice that uh, we have uh, started to, uh, we went up to that uh, 382 level, and we need to get that euro, we need to get that dollar index above that 9750 level. And I think it's going to do it. I don't know if we've done it yet or not because the euro has had a little bit of a rally today. Uh, the pound certainly hasn't, but uh, and the Australian dollar hasn't. But that's pretty much uh, what we're what we're keeping an eye on as we as we look at some of these patterns right here. Because if the U.S. dollar turns down and the euro turns up sharply, that's going to tell us that uh, something is different. Something is actually changing. Now, remember that Japanese yen went just a tiny bit above that level that we were talking about. Remember, that's the one that is the uh, risk rever uh, reverse one. Let's get that up so we can take a look at it. We did get, well, you, this is the opposite of it. So you're going to see the, the uh, mirror image of it. But when we went below that 9120, that's equivalent to the 110. Because if you add the two together, that's where you get your, your uh, dollar yen trade. So we did take that out, but we didn't go anywhere. We, we stayed there. We took it out, and it didn't explode to the other side. So there, there might be no one has – there is absolutely zero fear in the market, folks, and there should be because it goes up every single day. But when that fear does come in, and when it does come in, uh, it's going to be a lot different than some people think. So we'll pay uh, close attention to it. So that's the main thing. Uh, the gold. Uh, someone's asked a question about the gold. If the gold can close – Above that uh, 1565, we're trading at 1552 right now. If we can get above 1565, then I think we've got a chance here in that gold market to, to go a lot higher. We're already seeing it in platinum. We're not seeing it in silver. We're not seeing it in gold, but we are seeing it in platinum. The key level, of course, was that 1611. That was the 
0.6, excuse me, the 61% retracement of the high from August of 2011. Uh, and that, that's very, very important. That's, you know, that's, that's really uh, extremely important. Uh, someone's asked me to go over that astrology stuff again. I don't want to do it. All I can tell you is, folks, there's a lot of things that were happening. Whether they uh, mean anything or not, I don't know, but uh, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. So we'll watch it. <laughs> we'll see what's going on. I should, uh, well, I'm not, I don't have the time to do that right now because we've got the end of the show coming up already. But uh, that's me there. Oh, by the way, just for a point, a little factoid here. Uh, Dr. Miller died on uh, January the 8th. That happened to be the same day that her son died 12 years ago. He died of a heart attack. And that's uh, pretty much... Uh, what uh, it's very sad. We can talk about coincidences. My goodness, what a great lady. Eight seven seven. Also, Jeannie Long died too this past month. So, pretty tough. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, let's see what we've got. Uh, gold has sold off a little bit. Gold hit the 78% level of that high of yesterday, folks, at uh, 15. 
uh, 57. We're now trading at 1550. Uh, gold looks bearish, folks. You know that with that big 61% retracement there, you know that's really going to be uh, really be interesting to see what happens. By the way, the open interest in the uh, E-mini yesterday, S&P actually dropped during the making new highs, and we're almost making new highs again too. We had a drop in Nasdaq and also a drop in the Russell, but the Dow Jones, which is the smallest of the of the four indices, had a very slight. Uh, increase uh, in the market. So uh, that's what we're paying attention here so far today. So we'll pay close attention to that as we move through uh, the day. All right. Regarding that wheat, folks, uh, I was talking about a possible double top in the wheat up there at that 575 level. We sold off about a nickel uh, from that level. Any move above that 575, and with that thing being signed today at 1130, anything could happen. You know, they could walk out and say, forget it. You know, you just don't know what's going to happen to politics these days. So pay attention, folks. you got to put your stops in in these markets, especially now, because we're going to see volatility in 2020 like we've never seen before. That's why this volatility index, it should be trading at about three, given the fact where the market is, but it's trading at around 12. So somebody's taking protection somewhere. I don't know who it is, but uh, somebody must be. So let's pay a little bit of attention to that and see if that's going to mean anything uh, down the road. So we'll pay uh, attention to that as we as we look at some of these things unfold uh, for the day. So we're coming to the end of the road here, and uh, we'll see you folks uh, tomorrow. Uh, no more guests this week, but next week we're going to have somebody special on. I'm hoping to have an old floor trader, Scott Slutsky, who ran the currency pits for the Swiss franc for many years. And uh, he retired from trading a few years ago to do something else. And I'm trying to get him on the line to be our guest. I know he likes to talk, so that would be great if we could get him, tell him some of the stories uh, that we had. I hope you enjoyed the part about the uh, the old floor days. Uh, there's not many people around to remember about what it was like, but uh, it was uh, pretty tough. 877-927-6648. Uh, 